We're also watching news coming out of President-elect Donald Trump's first network interview with NBC's Meet the Press this morning, including this mention of tariffs and Canada. I'm a big believer in tariffs. I think tariffs are the most beautiful word. I think they're beautiful. It's going to make us rich. We're subsidizing Canada to the tune of over $100 billion a year. We're subsidizing Mexico for almost $300 billion. We shouldn't be subsidizing. Why are we subsidizing these countries? If we're going to subsidize them, let them become a state. Those comments will be troubling to many in this country. And in response to those threats, some provinces are now taking their message on tariffs directly to Americans. Just this past week, Doug Ford and Danielle Smith joined Fox News for interviews. And today, Ontario's Minister of Economic Development, Jobs and Trade is on his way to Washington for his first visit there since Donald Trump made that threat. Minister Fidelli, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure, Rosemary. So you're headed to Washington for this, this two-day visit. Who are you hoping to meet? What, what are you hoping to do? Well, thank you. We're on our way to Washington today. We have meetings uh, set with uh, various levels of government from um, the staff in the Senate to the House to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and, of course, our own ambassador, uh, uh, Canada's ambassador to Washington. So th this visit was planned after Donald Trump won, but before all of the tariff news <laughs> came out over the past couple of weeks. H how has this uh, particular threat of a 25 percent tariff changed the stakes of, of what you need to accomplish? Well, I, I think the stakes have changed. Uh, certainly the tone and the, uh, uh, the wording that's being used has changed. You know, we've been in Washington back and forth the last several months. Uh, but now it really is focused on this 25% uh, tariff. That's a very, very serious concern. We take it seriously as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, we want to hear it. We want to look in their eyes and see what we see and see, uh, you know, what we need to start to do. G give me a sense of what your fear would be for Ontario if, if the tariff went into place. Well, you know, I... It would not be uh, a very welcoming thought for uh, any business in Canada or the United States. We do $1.3 trillion worth of business as a country, but Ontario alone is the United States' third largest trading partner. You know, number one is Mexico, mostly incoming to the U.S. Number two is China, almost all incoming to the U.S. Number three is Ontario at $500 billion a year, evenly split. This is a very wow. balanced economy. $250 billion comes in, $250 billion goes out annually. So we don't make things for the United States. We make things with the United States. And I think that's a big part of the message that we'll deliver. Guys, we're, we're your recipient of uh, number one recipient of goods from 17 states, yeah, number yeah. two recipient of goods from 11 more. We've been doing this for generations. This can't be disrupted. When I, uh, I had on the show a Michigan uh, Democratic Congresswoman, Haley Stevens, who you might know, who was talking about the impact of the auto manufacturing sector for Michigan. It, w it, it would be catastrophic, I think, was, was her sense. I is that what you think as well? That the, I, Like, I don't even know how that would function if you were putting a tariff, given that parts go back and forth so many times. You know, I was talking to a tape manufacturer as well. And, you know, she told me the tape goes back and forth three times to the United States and back before it gets put in a, a, a store as well. It's not just auto, it's everything, but auto, of course, Michigan's our number one. Uh, this would be uh, ve very devastating to both economies. I, and to the consumer, the, the, the price, how you would do that every time, I, I don't think anybody's really calculated or, or how you would even calculate that type of uh, math. Look at our oil. Um, Canada is the largest exporter of oil to the U.S. Of all the oil they import, import we export 60% of it. Mexico, 10%. The rest of the world, Saudi, Venezuela, is the rest. We are their largest trading partner. This is a very, very serious. Their biggest threat is China. It really yeah. isn't us. And the target should be uh, moved on to China and or anybody who does transshipments for China, like Mexico.
Okay, well, so so let's let's get to that question then, because of course your boss, uh, the premiers, did suggest that Canada be prepared to cut out Mexico when we go to renegotiate uh, Kusma. Is that still the position of of the provincial government that that you at least have to put that on the table if Mexico can't get to where uh, the United States wants it to be? Well, we've picked our lane. We said to the United States, "We're with you. We are aligned with you," and. Mexico with transshipment, and that means goods coming in from China, yeah. stamped made in, uh, made in Mexico and shipped up to North, uh, the United States and Canada, that's a transshipment. Uh, pr uh, President-elect Trump has said he will do everything he can to fight transshipments. We are their ally, and so we are fully aligned in that strategy. So, so that means you, you think that that still should be on the table? That absolutely should be on the table. If if they want it to come off the table, they need to stop the transshipments. This is that in itself is very harmful to an economy to have these cheaply made vehicles because of low environmental standards, low employment standards. To have those cheaply made goods come into North America yeah. through a back door in Mexico, that's devastating to both our economies, and that has to be stopped at, at all costs. But the premier appeared on, on Fox Business News this past week, and you've also got this multi-million dollar ad campaign that's going to run on Fox yeah. during football games and, and other times when you, the president-elect might see it. Do you think that this kind of thing can work? I hope so. Uh, you know, we, we uh, saw the premier on CNN a few days before. Yeah. We see him on Fox. All the earned media, uh, like we're doing now even, uh, is important to us. That commercial is very important. We're spending, we're investing tens of millions of dollars in that commercial. Mm -hmm. It runs in Washington in the month of December, a uh, very key and pivotal month. Uh, it will run in our key trading states, all of January, February, and March. And it reminds people that we're there. We're your ally to the north. And we mm -hmm. have things you need, like critical minerals. You know, there's only one nickel mine in all of the United States, only one lithium mine in all of the United States. Now, I look in my backyard. I'm sitting here in North Bay, and I look in the backyard up north. Uh, we have those uh, around the corners. Yeah. Um, so it's very important, not just for EVs, but for their defense industry. And so that's why in the commercial you see some historic defense footage. You see some modern defense footage. It's to remind them. We've what been your ally a long time. Yeah. What, what about the things that the federal government has said it, it is going to do to address some of uh, Trump's concerns, whether it be fentanyl or looking at beefing up the border? Um, what do you make of the federal government's response so far on that front? Well, those are all the right things to say. And now, of course, those uh, words need to be put into action and we'll see uh, the kind of action. You know, the clock is really on to January 20th after yeah. the inaugural. Uh, we'll be down there for that event as well, back in Washington then. <clears throat> it's very, very important that they see movement. Um, I watched uh, a video this morning, actually, yeah. of uh, Stephen Miller talking about, here's our first 100 days, boom, 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 boom. This is a very aggressive schedule that uh, the president-elect has, and uh, uh, that's why we need to show progress, real physical progress on these by January 20th. Will Premier Ford go with you for that, for the inauguration? Um, I don't think that's in the Premier's schedule. Uh, yeah. We're scheduled to meet then. You know, this isn't just a a, a, a day trip down. No, of course, uh, This yeah. is to meet with, but it is actually, I'm going down in the morning and home that afternoon. <laughs> so, so it is a day trip down, but it's just not, it's just not to watch a parade. This is to meet Understood. with yeah. um, members, uh, members of Senate, members of House, uh, the, the the house uh, at the Canadian embassy, right. which happens, by the way, to be the best place to watch the inaugural. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I've been there for that as well. Minister Fideli, uh, have a good trip. Please come back and tell us how, how things go. And uh, as, as we get closer to the inaugural, we'd like to speak to you then as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anytime, Rosemary. Thank you.